We're good to go. Um, my name is Adrian Dix. I'm BC's Minister of Health. It's exciting to be at SFU Surrey today. This is such a beautiful building and a great place. Hi up there. And, uh, and uh, I want to start. Um, and uh, I'm just, uh, I'm generally fired up, but I am unbelievably fired up about today's announcement which I think is going to help our province for 5, 10, 50 years, 100 years before us. So I am pleased to be here today, pleased to be here on the territories of the Coast Salish people, including the, the Kwantli, the Kwantlen, the Keitsi, the Semiamu, Coquitlam, the Kakite, and of course the Sawasins First Nations. It's good to be here. My friends from the First Nations Health Authority, uh, Richard Jock is here. It's good to see you, Richard. It's so good to have you here. I'm grateful to be at uh, SFU Surrey, the hub of a world-class university that makes us proud, and their students and faculty and staff make us proud every day. I want to, first of all, present you who is going to be speaking today, uh, of course. And first will be Premier David Eby, Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Training, Ann King. SFU President and Vice Chancellor, Joy Johnson. How about that? SFU Master of Public Health student, Sherry Sandu. No pressure, Sherry. <laughs> no pressure. I just want you to know it's going to be fantastic. We've got other people here, my colleagues from the legislature, Surrey MLAs, fierce advocates for health care and for the people of Surrey. Uh, Jagru Brar is here. Ginny Sims is here. Gary Begg is here. Bruce Ralston is here in spirit. And since today is so much part of what Bruce has advocated for this place for so long, we think uh, about his role today. It's great to have the new mayor of Surrey here, Brenda Locke. Hi, Brenda. Your worship. I'm supposed to call you your worship, right? I've got to get used to that. But we can still say Adrian and Brenda, can we? Absolutely. So it's wonderful to be here. This is a great day. It's a great announcement. It's my honor to introduce Premier David Eby. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to see so many people here for today's announcement. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, uh, joining Minister Dix and acknowledging uh, the Coast Salish people, the Semiamu, uh, Coquitlam, Kwantlen, Kakite, and Tawasa Nations. Uh, it is wonderful to be here on SFU's campus. Uh, thank you to the dedication to all of the people who the health minister mentioned for your role in making life better for all British Columbians. Five years ago, our government was elected uh, to protect public health care and make sure it delivers for British Columbians. And every day since then, we've worked hard to improve care for people, building and improving hospitals across the province, opening urgent and primary care centers uh, for British Columbians, hiring thousands of nurses, bringing 4,600 health workers back into the public sector, all accomplished under the leadership of our remarkable health minister who guided our province through the worst public health crisis in memory. But we have so much more to do. The pandemic definitely exposed the challenges we face in our healthcare system. And today, too many British Columbians are struggling to find a family doctor. Too many are stuck waiting for care on a list or waiting in a wait room of an understaffed emergency room. I've been traveling the province and I hear it wherever I go. I hear it at home too. My wife Kaylee was a nurse and is now a family doctor. And when we go out in the community, people ask if she's taking new patients. We know about these challenges firsthand and they're not unique to British Columbia. These are challenges that are being felt by people across Canada. But as we've seen in other provinces, some believe the answer is to abandon our universal public health care system and to allow those who have money to buy their way to the front of the line. Of course, that doesn't solve the line that just changes who's at the front of the line. As your premier, I reject that approach. We cannot privatize our way to better healthcare or cut services and expect there to be more doctors and more care. We couldn't afford that approach five years ago and we sure can't afford it today. If the pandemic taught us one thing, it's that if we're gonna make ground on this, we have to do it together through our public healthcare system. Now, I'm determined to take action on the big challenges we face together. Now, that's housing, public safety, and it's certainly the challenge of healthcare, making sure everybody has access to a family doctor. 
That's why we're acting to train, recruit, and retain family doctors now, today, and train the health workforce we're going to need for the future. A month ago, you will have seen we introduced a new way of paying and recognizing our family doctors, encouraging people to participate in our healthcare system as family doctors delivering the care that families expect. It's one of the most important steps that we can take to attract new doctors to family practice. We're expanding the existing medical school at UBC to train more physicians to deliver care for British Columbians as part of our comprehensive health workforce strategy. And yesterday, a really important announcement, we've got people in this province with medical training who are ready to deliver care in this province who can't because their licenses are not being recognized. A really important announcement yesterday with the College of Physicians and Surgeons to fast track those people to deliver care. We can't have them on the sidelines while families wait for care. Now today, a really important announcement for Surrey. A new medical school right here on SFU's Surrey campus represents a significant step towards training the doctors of tomorrow. I'm pleased to announce the hiring of an interim dean and an investment of $4.9 million in startup funding for the new medical school. The interim dean is Dr. Roger Strasser, who will provide strategic leadership and planning around the establishment of the new medical school. He has a record of getting things done. He was the founding dean and CEO of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, the most recently accredited, accredited medical school in Canada. He's a recognized leader in the development of health professional education. When the new SFU Medical School is up and running, this will be the first new medical school in Western Canada in 50 years. Taken together with, <laughs> very exciting news. Taken together with the expansion of seats at UBC, this will mean important new capacity at universities in British Columbia to train the doctors of tomorrow. As we take immediate steps to make sure that the doctors who are here today can practice in our hospitals and communities across the province. I believe that British Columbia should be a place where everyone can build a good life, where you can afford a good place to live, where you get the health care you need, when and where you need it, and where you have the training opportunities to pursue your dreams, and frankly, especially today, if your dream includes potentially being a doctor someday. That's the BC we all believe in. Let's keep building it together. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, we've been, uh, uh, some people uh, in this place have been wanting to do this for a long time. And I'm one of them. So I'm pretty happy today. And I think one of the people who has been instrumental in making this happen, I won't say that having a Minister of Advanced Education from Burnaby is good for SFU. I will say having Anne Kang as Minister of Advanced Education has made a huge difference for people across our province and for this project, and it's my honor to introduce her to speak now. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. It is so great to see so many students here. It is so wonderful to be here at SFU. I'm just so excited. And as I walked in the door, I could feel the excitement in this room. My name is Anne Kang, and I am the proud Minister for Advanced Education and Skills Training, and I'm just so proud of the work that SFU has been doing. I'd like to recognize that we are in the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Keitsi, Kwantlen, and Semiamu people, and I express my deep gratitude to them for allowing us to host um, this announcement here on, on their land. I also like to share my gratitude with Premier David Evey, as well as Health Minister Adrian Dix, as well as with uh, SFU President Joy Johnson, and all my colleagues here who has been a strong advocate and strong champion for this project. And for all, everyone here in your efforts in these exciting next steps for SFU's new medical school.
I also especially would like to extend that gratitude to Dr. Roger Strasser as well for providing his ex uh, incredible expertise and strategic leadership in planning of this new medical school. It takes a team to get here, and we're all here working together collaboratively on this. We're focused on training and educating a new generation of healthcare workers to support families in BC now and well into the future. This is an exciting and significant step forward today. And the new SFU Medical School in Surrey will focus on training more doctors prepared to meet the healthcare needs of BC families. Reciprocity, cultural safety, humility will be embedded throughout the school along with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis knowledge system and perspectives. Students will be able to learn, yes, awesome, First Nations, Inuit and Métis perspectives. This is going to be very inclusive. And students will be able to learn the team-based primary care settings that are patient-centered. This environment will enable students to become primary care providers and specialists that can deliver quality care across communities and all populations across British Columbia. This work that we're doing will help meet the growing demand for physicians in British Columbia over the longer term and train the next generation of doctors. This adds to the recent good news we have on training more doctors, more nurses, more allied uh, health professionals, including 322 more allied health professionals across public post-secondary institutions throughout BC, and 602 new nursing seats across 17 post-secondary institutions in BC. And we're taking real action to solve the healthcare challenges here in BC. And we recognize that students are the future of medicine. And we're investing in the training and educating the new generation of healthcare workers to support families in BC well into the future. I'd like to take this opportunity again to thank everyone for all the support and hard work that all of you have put in. I know we, we ran and hit uh, the ground with our feet running and we are still running. This is truly a collaborative effort and I want to recognize that because as we work together, we are making moves forward to effectively boost our healthcare system and our health workforce. So thank you so much everyone for joining us in this very exciting endeavor and I look forward to our future together. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Minister King and it's a pretty exciting day, you know? It wasn't so long ago, you know, we were having coffee about this and, and you're riding in Burnaby, so there you go. It's, it's uh, wonderful and thank uh, Minister Ann Kang for her exceptional work on this project. I wanna introduce over my left shoulder, he's always on my left, he's one of the few people always on my left, Minister Harry Baines, the Labour Minister, the MLA for Surrey Newton, there he is. <laughs> you know, I, it, perhaps as if you will have a program in MC training, and then I'll remember to introduce Harry next time at the beginning. And uh, my friend Anita Huberman from the Surrey Board of Trade who's with us as well, who demonstrates the support of this whole community for, um, for the healthcare needs of people in Surrey and their essential role in all elements of Surrey life. Obviously, as Minister Kang has said, this is a collaborative effort and uh, it's um, my honor now to introduce one of the key players in that effort, Joy Johnson, the president and vice chancellor of Simon Fraser University. Premier Eby, um, ministers, guests, this is a fantastic day for British Columbia and for Simon Fraser University. And I want to say it is so great to see so many students, faculty, staff, Board of Governors members, partners, community and government representatives joining us here today. I am so pleased to hear about this announcement and the fact that we are moving forward together. I want to welcome all of you to SFU's Surrey campus. I too want to acknowledge the land that we're on. We're privileged to be on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Kwantlen, Katsi, Semiamo, Kukwitlam, Kekite, Tuwasan First Nations. And I also want to recognize the Métis and Inuit communities who call this region home. 
From our very beginning, more than half a century ago, SFU has worked to make life better for the communities that we serve. SFU Surrey campus is a tribute to that vision. On this campus, students study to be leaders in clean tech and sustainable engineering, helping to create a brighter future. On this campus, students are learning to be leaders, working on cutting edge areas such as quantum computing, agri-tech, and public health. And through community partnerships of all kinds, our faculty, our staff, and our students are making a difference for the people of Surrey and beyond. For these and for so many other reasons, we are proud to call SFU Canada's engaged university. And we are delighted to be home to British Columbia's new medical school. I'm gonna tell you it will be a medical school with a distinct purpose. A medical school that focuses on the primary care needs of, di of diverse communities across the province, particularly underserved populations. It'll be a medical school that embeds indigenous ways of knowing and being and community embedded culturally relevant health care. It'll be a medical school that serves everyone in BC, educating the next generation of doctors and communities throughout the province with Indigenous partners, health authorities, and the community, including our key partners, Fraser Health and the First Nations Health Authority, we've been hard at work building toward this vision. Today's announcement is another important milestone on that journey. Our new interim dean that you've heard about, Dr. Roger Strasser, is a leader uh, in the field. Dr. Strasser is someone with enormous experience in Canada and around the world delivering socially accountable medical education. And so among his many academic and professional accomplishments, Dr. Strasser also is a former member of the Committee on Accreditation and Canadian Medical School, of Canadian Medical Schools. So we are in good hands. We're lucky to have him and we're extremely excited to welcome him to Simon Fraser University. So I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to our new Premier for demonstrating his support for the new medical school and to the Minister of Health and Advanced Education and Skills Training for the vision and tenacity for moving it forward. They are joined by people across this community and province who believe that strong public health is a right shared by all, a responsibility that we owe to each other. And I can promise you that everyone at SFU will continue working as hard as we can to help fulfill that promise. So thank you ever so much for being here today. Thank you uh, very much, Joy. You think I get used to this mask thing after a while. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, um, I know that the leadership of SFU is so much part of this, uh, will play, I think, an important, such an important role in this part of our healthcare system. I appreciate, in particular, uh, the President's leadership in this matter and uh, all the work she's done. Now, now we come to our final speaker. There's no pressure here at all, Sherry. No pressure at all. Um, but uh, it's, uh, we have, I think, at this university, such a dynamic and remarkable uh, student body, students who are, who are leading our province now and will lead our province for, for decades to come. And so it's my honor to uh, introduce SFU Masters of Public Health student, Sherry Sandu, to say a few words. Sherry. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sherry Sandu, and I'm honored to be speaking on behalf of the many br young British Columbians who share the same dream as me, to serve our community. We have witnessed and endured a primary health crisis. We have seen our communities and families struggle to find a family doctor and to find care that is prompt and culturally safe. Like myself, 
Many bright young people want to serve our communities through the medical profession. This new medical school is a beacon of hope for all the students who love our communities and want to serve the people that live in them. We have had the great privilege to be a part of the SFU community. This institution has empowered me and taught me to be conscious of my positionality while providing me with a world-class education, faculty, and facilities. Further, I have firsthand seen SFU's commitment to Indigenous reconciliation and health. SFU has believed in me in every turn and shaped me into an effective public health practitioner. It is very exciting to know that a great school like SFU will be nurturing future doctors. Further, I have lived my entire life in Surrey. This is a vibrant and growing community that has so much to offer. I know so many like myself are beyond pleased to see this medical school be placed in our beloved home of Surrey. To me, this new medical school represents more opportunities to stay within my community and understand the forces that dictate health within it while having the chance to pursue a world-class medical education. To me, more opportunity for bright young students who are itching to utilize their passion and determination to serve British Columbians within BC. I would like to thank the BC government and SFU for embarking on this endeavor that means so much to all of us. Thank you. So uh, thank you. Uh, first medical school in Western Canada. Since, it's in, uh, since 1967. That's a long time. I was three. <laughs> David wasn't around yet. The Premier wasn't around yet. And it's, it's not remarkable. Uh, it is remarkable, I think, and important that it's here in Surrey that it'll be headquarters. Surrey is going to be our largest community, but is already the center of so much dynamism in BC life, economic and cultural and political dynamism in this community. What's happening here is profound and remarkable. And having this medical school here will be part of a vibrant community that's going to make a huge difference for future generations in our province. We're so proud, I'm so proud of our Premier and our Minister of Advanced Education for pursuing, uh, for pursuing and making this proposal happen. So proud of SFU, I'm so proud of the people of Surrey who have done exceptional things in a time of pandemic in healthcare to support one another, to help one another. We have, at different times, had to st stand up extraordinary care in this community. And our healthcare workers and our people in this community have made an enormous difference every day. This, this promises an even brighter future for Surrey. Having a medical school here, having a, our second hospital here, having more long-term care here, increasing primary care here, all of those things promise a better future. But today is a day of real celebration. I wanna thank you all for coming. And now we're at the most ex exciting part of, of uh, our presentation today. I'm gonna to invite Premier Eby back uh, to the stage to take for the interactive portions to take questions from the media. <laughs> Premier Evie. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. A reminder to media on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. You'll be limited to one question and one follow up. Please remember to take yourself off mute uh, ahead of asking your question. We're going to start going on the line today with Richard Sussman from Global News. Go ahead, Richard. Premier, I know this wasn't your promise, but when this was done in the 2020 election, the commitment was the medical school could be having graduates by 2324. Then that got amended to being open by 2324. Now it's delayed to 2026. Can you explain why we're seeing this delay and are you worried? that this means we won't get new doctors from this facility into the system until potentially 2029 or 2030. Well, uh, as, as you heard, uh, this is the first new medical school in Western Canada in 50 years. Uh, there are considerable logistics behind setting up a new medical school and doing it properly. And so that work is uh, underway. 
and we're going as quickly as we can. But it's important for British Columbians to recognize this medical school is not going to solve the urgent issues we face today. This is a long-term investment in a secure public health care system that works for everybody in our province. Uh, we have uh, taken steps to open spaces in the short term at UBC, uh, more than 100 residency and family doctor spaces. An announcement yesterday about getting those uh, people with international experience, international training off the sidelines and into our hospitals, into our communities, delivering care as quickly as possible. This is one part of an array of strategies to respond to the healthcare crisis the British Columbians are facing right now. Richard, would you like to take a follow up? Yes, by the time we hit, first off, what's your estimation for when we'll actually have graduates from this school and how many? And you mentioned it's not the full fix, but by 2030, the estimations are that 40% of doctors will have retired. How, what percentage of that do you hope to make up through this new school? Uh, so the, this uh, announcement today uh, is in part around funding related to a uh, business case, uh, the planning around uh, the number of students and the delivery of the education work that's going to happen at this important uh, brand new medical school here in Surrey. Uh, and so that work is underway. Uh, our understanding and expectation is uh, that students will be uh, uh, commencing in 26 uh, and graduating uh, uh, with the first doctors coming to the system uh, by 30. Uh, and it's important to know that when we're looking for the doctors of the future, it's through the medical school we have right now at UBC. It's through the internationally trained graduates, uh, the people who have experience who are outside of the system. We need those folks on the front lines of the healthcare system immediately. This is about uh, positioning our province, making sure for the long term, we're delivering those healthcare professionals that we know that our province is going to need. Uh, we're growing incredibly rapidly. We added 100,000 people to our province last year. We're gonna set another record this year of people moving to British Columbia. And this is part of how we make sure we're gonna have the healthcare professionals, professionals to deliver for those folks who are coming to BC. Just a reminder, there's media on the line to press star one to enter the queue. For the next question, we're going to come back to the floor here with Francis Plurid from Radio Canada. Go ahead, Francis. Hi, Premier. Um, my question would be for Minister Dix in French, <laughs> so you get a bit of a break. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour, uh, Monsieur Ministre. Uh, donc, il y a deux ans, vous annoncez ce projet. Uh, on devait accueillir les premiers étudiants l'automne prochain. On parle plutôt de 2026 maintenant. Qu'est-ce qui explique les délais et combien de médecins on veut former à terme? Uh, franchement, ce n'est pas un délai. J'étais uh, le chef du Nouveau Parti démocratique en 2000, uh, 2011, hein? 2012, 2013. Et j'ai présenté la nécessité d'avoir une deuxième uh, école uh, pour les nouveaux, uh, des, nouveaux, des nouveaux médecins dans la province. La, la chose qui était entre nous et une réussite, c'était le gouvernement de l'époque. Donc, on avait un gouvernement qui s'opposait à ce programme, à SFU, à cet effort, à cette, euh, ces ambitions. Donc, si on avait un autre gouvernement à l'époque, j'ai perdu l'élection, bien entendu. Hein? On aurait une école ici aujourd'hui. Mais ce, 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 cela est le passé. On va avoir une école pour les prochains euh, 50 ans, 60 ans, 100 ans. Et euh, on commence aujourd'hui avec un nouveau dean euh, de, cette, euh, de cette école qui va, et je pense, une transformation de l'éducation pour euh, euh, des, des médecins dans la province. Le rôle de, de UBC est important aussi. 128 nouveaux euh, sièges à UBC, ce qui est quand même un, un euh, accroissement important. On a déjà augmenté des sièges à UBC, mais ceci, c'est quelque chose de différent et d'important. Donc, on fait un tas de choses pour euh, ajouter et de remplacer les médecins dans la province actuellement. On, a fait, on peut faire une liste de 10 ou 11 mesures, n'est-ce pas? On a 75 mesures dans notre plan de ressources humaines dans la province, et ceci est une de ces mesures, et c'est une mesure importante, et c'est un moment important pour l'histoire euh, de la santé publique en Colombie-Britannique. Le rôle d'SFU à l'avenir va être quelque chose d'important 
euh, en ajoutant à le rôle important du BC et d'autres institutions dans la province, y compris Quantlin Polytechnic University, qui va jouer un rôle important ici à Surrey, quand on va avoir un deuxième hôpital dans cette ville. Francis? Combien de médecins on compte former euh, lorsque le programme sera opérationnel? Oui, mais ça, c'est le développement euh, du, du cas. Mais on va avoir les premiers en 2026. Et on va avoir des nouveaux, euh, des, de nouveaux renseignements alors que euh, monsieur, le, le Dr. Strasser fait son travail. Merci. For the next question, we'll go back to the line to Binder Sedgen from CTV News. Go ahead, Binder. Hi there. Um, senior, um, so I understand you still need to figure out sort of how many students are going to go to the school, where they're, they'll physically be, the curriculum. You have hired an interim dean. Uh, can you talk about what else has been done since 2020 and what still needs to be done in advance of getting students into the classroom? Uh, work has been underway on a business plan for the medical school. Uh, Dr. Strasser uh, has been uh, recruited and, as I announced today, hired uh, to take on that role. This funding will support Dr. Strasser in uh, his work in recruiting uh, the dean for the school, uh, key uh, expert personnel that will assist in developing the curriculum, setting up a project office for the new medical school, Uh, and, uh, and really bringing this project to life. It's a very exciting time for SFU and for British Columbians looking at their first new medical school, the first new medical school in Western Canada uh, in 50 years. Binder, do you have a follow-up? I do, and I'm also wondering, Senior, in the answer to Richard, you said that um, the students who are graduating wouldn't necessarily help with the healthcare crisis now. Um, I'm kind of having a difficult time understanding why that would be. Um, but like, what are they going to do if not help ease some of the woes we're seeing in the healthcare system? Yeah, perhaps I can uh, clarify. These, uh, the, the school's not open yet, and there's a healthcare crisis that British Columbians are facing now. They need support in hospitals, in family doctors immediately. Um, I feel that urgency from them. It will be some years before doctors uh, come out of this new medical school. So this is medium and long-term response to the challenges we face. In the immediate term, there was a really important announcement yesterday about making sure that we're not leaving any medical skills uh, unused in our province, that we don't have doctors, nurses, and other health professionals on the sidelines when British Columbians are waiting in emergency rooms. So making sure that the, the credentials, that the expertise that those folks have are recognized by our medical system was what that announcement's about yesterday. That's about the immediate term, making sure we have people now for British Columbians in crisis uh, that need that health care. Uh, and so that is, uh, uh, that's the distinction. We're doing, we're doing work that will help people today, and we're doing work that will help uh, people tomorrow. And, uh, and it's all part of our work uh, under the health human resources strategy that Minister Dix has been leading, making sure that we have the resources, not just for the immediate term, for support for healthcare workers who are coming out of the pandemic and they're tired and they're stressed, uh, making sure they have the support they need, but also for tomorrow for population growth for centers like Surrey, uh, a center of dynamism and excitement that's growing rapidly, uh, making sure that there's healthcare here in the future to support our public healthcare system. For the last question this afternoon, we're going to come back to the floor for Parmeet Kamra from Red FM. Uh, good afternoon, Premier. This is Parmeet from Red FM. And first of all, I would like to congratulate you on the today's announcement and the yesterday's announcement as well. These are wonderful, especially in the medical facility. Uh, my question is, uh, as you have mentioned, that these are medium and long-term goals which you are working on in your government. Um, and you have uh, mentioned practice ready assessment program for the doctors uh, who will be placed in BC. Uh, what about those people who are already in this profession uh, who were already doctor but now have moved to different professions because of the lack of these kind of facility. If they ever want to come back into this profession, will there be any assessment program from them for them as well? Yes, uh, yesterday we announced uh, that in, uh, in less than two years, we are tripling the uh, practice ready assessment program. This is where if you have medical training from another place, uh, that you can come medical experience from another place, you come, you get assessed, and you're able to identify what additional training you may need or what uh, you're able to do, uh, be licensed for within our existing medical system. But also, there was a really important announcement about uh, uh, physicians that have experience from other jurisdictions, international medical graduates that have experience that will be able to start work right away. 
uh, working in teams, working with other physicians, uh, providing support. Uh, now they'll work under the supervision of a licensed physician, but they'll be able to start work right away. And so there are a couple of different pathways, there were actually three different pathways discussed yesterday, uh, that internationally trained and internationally experienced physicians and medical professionals can use. And this is in addition to the work that we've done, uh, Minister Dix led, around nurses, uh, so that internationally trained nurses uh, can more rapidly come into our healthcare system, be assessed and, and, and provide that support that we need. So uh, to all medical professionals with training and experience, and I was in uh, Chilliwack and I was hosted, uh, when I was touring the province, I was hosted at the home of a couple. Uh, the husband is a surgeon, the wife is a dentist. Uh, they both work for the local school board. Uh, for folks that have that medical experience, that medical training, uh, I want them to know that we are opening the pathways for you to get to work to provide support in BC's healthcare system. And, uh, and if you're interested in coming back, we would love to have you working in the healthcare system. Do you have a follow up for me? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, numbers indicate that the, uh, in normal scenario, like in BC right now, uh, one physician is taking care of around 1,000 to 1,200 patients. Uh, are we doing anything to uh, lessen their burden so that they can uh, attend the people better and can provide good medical facilities which they are entitled to? Yes, one of, the, uh, one of the pieces around yesterday's announcement with these uh, uh, physicians that have medical experience but still need to work under the supervision of, a, for example, a family doctor or a doctor in a hospital setting uh, is when they come on and they work with those doctors, they can increase the number of patients that that doctor takes. We also have team-based care initiatives where with nurse practitioners and nurses and others, uh, we can have family doctors taking on even more patients and really focusing on what they were trained on with the other health professionals supporting them, uh, working on what they were trained on and, and using everybody to the maximum skill so that the majority of, so that uh, as many British Columbians as possible can access a family doctor. We need to extend those physicians and their abilities uh, through uh, partnering them up with other health professionals. Uh, it's a key part of the work we're doing. And this concludes our question and answer period. Thanks for joining us. Thanks today. very much, everybody.